Hello, welcome to Legal Awareness web series. We have now started an English series of Legal Awareness uh, web series. We made a video about uh, the issue of human dignity of our women and how our women have been paraded naked so that someone can test whether they are pregnant or not, whether they are in their periods and someone uh, administered an oath to about 1000 girls that they will marry as per the wishes of their parents. I would request you to kindly follow our English series and kindly subscribe to our channel. Today I am going to talk about a very painful uh, news and the story which has been done by Rachna uh, Kher uh, in HuffPost. This is about how a new kind of slavery has come into being in India about our Dalits. I am conscious of the fact that historically Dalits have been uh, underprivileged, they have been oppressed and exploited by the upper caste. But in a liberal and modern India which promised justice, social, economic and political, which promised dignity of individual, which promised liberty, one is shocked to see that the Dalit street sweepers have to now wear GPS enabled efficiency trackers. I have a friend in wildlife who lives in Abu Dhabi and he keeps telling me about satellite tracking of birds, radio coloring of birds and tells me interesting stories about birds, how much time they take from Siberia to come to India, what were their stations of stop, with what speed they were flying. Have we now reduced our fellow human being to such level that we are monitoring where they are going, what they are doing, when they are resting, what they are doing in their houses. Some of our women employees of this uh, Panchkula corporation are even scared to go to toilets and bathrooms to attend their call of nature because there is a camera inside there is a microphone inside and each and every movement of theirs is monitored by their supervisor. And Panchkula is not just one corporation which has adopted this uh, digital device. Similar devices have been used in Masur, Lucknow, Indore, Thane, Navi Mumbai, Nagpur, Chandigarh. These devices have been procured uh, at a cost of about 2 crore. And if there is a replacement, then another 8,000 rupees are to be spent. Women in chilly weather in November, December, January in Delhi and uh, NCT, they have to come on roads to street them. Yes, we want Swachh Bharat, but we do not want Swachh Bharat at the cost of compromising human dignity. Human dignity as a constitutional value is far more dearer to us. What are we doing through this GPS tracking? We are ensuring that these people work during working hours. The officers say that if I have 4000 people, how can I manu uh, manually monitor them? You have to find ways to ma monitor them. This kind of surveillance clearly impinges on their right to privacy and on their right to human dignity. And these rights are very much part and parcel of right to life and personal liberty. I feel that this is, uh, this is not the kind of digital India we want. What kind of surveillance revolution in the name of uh, digital India is taking place in India is really uh, deplorable. What is the state of untouchability in our country? India Human Development Survey Report of National Council of Applied Economic Research tells us 27% Indians still practice untouchability. 52% Brahmins practice untouchability. We have a special marriage act which Nehru got passed as part of the Hindu court bill in 1954 and which permits valid marriages between people of different religion and which permits inter-caste marriages. We want uniform civil code, but look at the success of Special Marriage Act. Only 5.3% Indians have inter-caste marriages. Look at any matrimonial ad in our newspapers on a Sunday morning. 
and you will see that we continue to be a caste society. Which states have the most widespread untouchability? Madhya Pradesh 53%, Himachal Pradesh 50%, Chhattisgarh 48%, Rajasthan and Bihar 47%, UP 43%. The report says every third Hindu practices untouchability. That is 33 to 35%. Let me also talk of some very disturbing recent incidents. Who can forget 2016 Una incident where Dalit's uh, young boys were beaten up and somebody had the audacity to videotape it and put it on YouTube. And now these young people have written to the President of India asking permission for euthanasia. They are seeking permission to be deported to some country where they will not be discriminated. In the whole debate about citizenship, we want to deport foreigners. Our own citizens are now asking that send us to a place where there will not be a discrimination. Unfortunately, not many countries are free from discrimination. You have another incident from Uttarakhand where a 21-year-old Jitender was beaten up and eventually he died after 9 days due to injuries and what was his fault? He had the courage to sit on the chair and eat at a wedding. Can you believe it? That in almost all weddings in India, the cooks must always be from the upper caste. Because any food which is cooked by lower caste people will not be accepted by upper caste people. In Sangroor in Punjab, similarly another uh, uh, Dalit youth was first beaten up, tied to the tree and then forced to drink urine. What are we doing to our country? Look at Hardoi. Chief Minister Yogi Atitanath is campaigning in Kerala, campaigning in uh, uh, Delhi, but look in Hardoi, just about two hours from Lucknow, a 20 year old Dalit boy was burnt alive. We are in a pathetic state. Supreme Court uh, two years ago diluted SCST Atrocities Act and said inquiries are to be made before FIR is to be filed. I must appreciate the Modi government which first got the law overturned through a parliamentary legislation. And then I must also appreciate the Supreme Court, which not only recently upheld the validity of this amendment, but has also withdrawn in review its own judgment. But what are the facts? Let us accept them that every hour two Dalits are assaulted in India. Every day two Dalits are murdered and two Dalit houses are set on fire. Now this is definitely a very very disturbing scenario and one must do something about it if we really want to become a, a, a world leader. In terms of rights, I personally believe that right to human dignity is an essential facet of right to life and personal liberty. Therefore. This surveillance mechanism clearly violates right to life and personal liberty. It is an arbitrary invasion of one's privacy and therefore it is clearly hit by Article 21. In All India Statutory Corporation versus Union Labor, United Labor Union, a 1997 judgment of the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said preamble and Article 38 envisage social justice as an aspect of life to meaningful and livable with human dignity. Similarly, in Consumer Education and Research Center versus Union of India 1995 judgment, the Supreme Court said right to life includes protection of the health and strength of workers. It is the minimum requirement to enable a person to live with human dignity. In Francis Kerala Mullian versus Administrator Union Territory of Delhi, Supreme Court said Article 21 does not ensure and guarantee just animal existence. This right includes right to live with human dignity. In DK Basu, Supreme Court said 
custodial torture when you are in police custody is the worst violation of human dignity. In Krishna Singh Ravinder Dev versus State of Rajasthan, Supreme Court said human dignity is a dear value of our constitution. We abolished bonded labor in 1976. In 1955, we came up with protection of civil rights act. As this law did not really achieve the desired result, we had to bring in in 1989 SCST Atrocities Act, which Supreme Court had diluted but subsequently withdrawn its judgment. In Sunil Batra case, the Supreme Court said that the treatment of human being which offends human dignity imposes avoidable torture and reduces the man to the level of a beast would certainly be arbitrary and violative of Article 21. In famous Unni Krishnan case, Supreme Court said human dignity is very much part and parcel of Article 21 right to life and personal liberty. Even under international law, if you look at Article 4 of Universal Declaration of Human Rights, slavery has been abolished. Right to life, liberty and security have been guaranteed. Article 5 guarantees a right against inhuman, cruel, degrading treatment of fellow human beings. International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights also guarantees similar rights. There is a consensus that right to human dignity is a human right. And as a human right, now it has been imported and incorporated as part and parcel and essential facet of our right to life and personal liberty under Article 21. I believe this kind of initiatives give us and reminds us what Tolstoy said. Slavery was abolished, but what was abolished was just the word, not the thing. New and newer forms of slaveries keep coming. I think as a constitutional democracy, as a liberal democracy, it is our duty to stop all such invasion of privacy and surveillance should be stopped. Every human being and individual deserves human dignity, deserves freedom and deserves autonomy. If you like Legal Awareness web series, I would request you to kindly subscribe us and like us on Facebook and Twitter. We have also made now Legal Awareness app which you can download from Google App Store. If you are finding it difficult to download, one number is appearing on your screen kindly send us a missed call and app shall be delivered to you. Thank you very much.